Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is video 22.3 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video discusses how to approach coronary stent thrombosis. Stent thrombosis can be a catastrophic event, as it often presents with an acute myocardial infarction and has high morbidity and mortality. This is an example of a patient who had acute stent thrombosis five hours after standing off the LAD that presented with anterior ST segment elevation. Stent thrombosis is classified based on timing to early, late, and very late, early being less than 30 days, late 30 days to one year, and very late more than one year. Also, early is subdivided to acute, which is within 24 hours, as was the previous case, or more than 24 hours until 30 days. There are different causes of stent thrombosis related to the patient, the lesion, and the stent. For example, poor response to antiplatelet medications or current smoking are patient-related factors. Treatment of complex lesions such as bifurcations and heavily calcified lesions are lesion-related factors and stent undersizing or overlapping stents are stent-related factors. Treating a patient with stent thrombosis is best done when we understand what is the mechanism of stent thrombosis. And the mechanisms for early stent thrombosis are often stent under expansion or edge dissection or loss of stent integrity, whereas for late and very late they have to do with Again, stent under expansion, but also neointima and neoatherosclerosis, late acquired malaposition, and in rare cases, hypersensitivity reactions. Antipedal therapy is critically important to prevent stent thrombosis, and uh, the compliance of the patient to antipedal therapy should always be questioned. If uh, there are no obvious mechanical causes for stent thrombosis, then platelet reactivity can be useful to determine if this is the underlying cause of stent thrombosis. Also, in the current era of COVID-19, there is the tendency for hypercoagulability in some of those patients. This is an example of stent thrombosis in a patient who had a recent stent in the circumflex and had COVID-19. So something to always suspect, some of the COVID-19 patients have had very high thrombus burden, both in the coronary but other, coron other arterial beds. We will discuss how each of the 14 steps of percutaneous coronary intervention applies to patients who have coronary stent thrombosis. First of all, planning. That can be challenging since the patients with stent thrombosis are often coming emergently with acute myocardial infarction, often with ST segment elevation. However, it is important to ask them about their compliance with antiplatelet therapy. Monitoring is important because those patients have high risk of deterioration. Therefore, careful monitoring of the pressure and the AKG is critical to understand if something is going the wrong way. In terms of medications, if uh, the patient has very large thrombus burden, then either 2B3 inhibitors or cangrelor can be used. Also, after stent thrombosis, most patients receive more potent P2Y12 inhibitors, prasugar or ticagrelor, and often for more than 12 months unless they have high bleeding risk. Both femoral or radial access can be used for ST segment elevation. Usually, radial access is preferred especially if uh, more potent antiplatelet agents are being administered. Engagement of the coronary artery is done per standard fashion. Coronary angiography is also done per standard fashion to find the area of the problem. Sometimes using the stent boost or clear stent can help visualize the stent and determine if there is stent under expansion or stent fracture. Determining the target lesion is, in most cases, easy, as the stand is often occluded or has an interluminal filling defect. Wiring can be challenging sometimes. One of the reasons is that the wire might enter under the stand struts, and that is why using a looped wire, a knuckled wire, may actually help for avoiding going under stand struts. 
and often polymer jacketed wires can help. This is an example of a patient with right coronary artery stents that have been wired, but the equipment cannot cross, likely because the wire has entered behind the stent structure. In this case, the treatment is to rewire using a looped guide wire. Lesion preparation is important in stent thrombosis uh, patients. Number one, thrombectomy might be required, especially if there is large thrombus burden, and this is discussed in a separate video. But also, if the stent is underexpanded, then measures should be taken to allow good expansion of the stent. Also, if the stent is malopposed, then the stent should be postulated to, be, to become opposed to the wall of the vessel. We know that once a stent is placed, there are four critical parameters to assess, two of which, the stent expansion and edge dissections, are more important for potentially causing stent thrombosis. So how to treat a patient who has stent thrombosis due to stent under expansion? This is such a patient who had a right coronary lesion. The result of stenting was not good despite high pressure balloon inflations. And then a few days later, presented with stent thrombosis, the stent is occluded, the patient came with an inferior C-segment myocardial infarction. Clearly here, the problem is stent under expansion and treatment is, uh, as described in a separate video, about treating balloon and dilatable lesions in stent. Briefly, this involves high-pressure balloon inflations, often with plaque modification balloons. It can involve laser with contrast injection simultaneously, rarely atherectomy, and in even more rare cases, a bindimal lesion crossing. Intravascular lithotripsy is increasingly being performed in this setting, and in Europe, there is also a very high-pressure balloon that can be used to expand stents. In this particular patient, what was done was laser with contrast that successfully expanded the stent, both in geographically and by intravascular ultrasound. This is another patient who presented with acute stent thrombosis in the setting of stent under expansion. This can be seen using the stent boost technology as well as with optical coherence tomography. The stent could not be expanded with high pressure balloon inflations. However, then a lithotripsy balloon was used, which successfully expanded the stent as can be seen both in geographically as well as by optical coherence tomography. If the cause of stent thrombosis is dissection, then another stent is typically placed to cover the area of dissection. Same for cases of uh, stent thrombosis due to neointima formation and neoatherosclerosis. Also, a stent is placed if there is loss of stent integrity, such as stent fracture or stent longitudinal deformation. Finally, if the stent is malopposed, then balloon angioplasty is done to oppose the stent structure. Importantly, for stent thrombosis cases, placing another stent is not always needed, especially if there are multiple previous stent layers or if the stent is underexpanded. In cases of underexpanded stent, the key thing is to expand the stent and not place additional stent layers. Closing the access point is done as per standard fashion. Coronary physiology should not be done for stent thrombosis culprit lesions. Since these are acute coronary syndrome lesions, the microvascular is affected, and therefore coronary physiology is not accurate in this setting. In contrast, intravascular imaging is critically important. Actually, for stent thrombosis or sternal stenosis and for left main PCI, Many argue that it should be, doing in, should be used in every single case. And it is critical for understanding the mechanism of stent thrombosis and taking the appropriate corrective actions. Finally, hemodynamic support may be needed in stent thrombosis patients who often come with an acute coronary syndrome and therefore are at risk of hemodynamic deterioration. So in summary, stent thrombosis can be a catastrophic event. The key to successful treatment is to understand what is the mechanism. If that is under expansion, then the stand is expanded using various techniques. If the mechanism is dissection, neointima, or loss of stand integrity, then typically more stands are placed. And if the mechanism is malaposition, 
then the stent is ballooned to expand it. Also, antiplatelet therapy is optimized both acutely, for example, giving more aggressive antiplatelet agents in patients with large thrombus burden, but also longer term, giving more potent P2Y12 inhibitors, ticagrelor and prasugrel, often for more than 12 months. Thank you.